Hi, this is uh, Kevin Trainer, and welcome to the supplement to my lecture on uh, regular expressions, which is uh, based on chapter 11 from the Severance uh, Python book. And um, there's one issue that's not covered uh, uh, well in the Severance book, and that is the use of Python raw strings to uh, to show the pattern that we want to use in a regular expression. Now that's become um, really the dominant way to do it, and we haven't covered that yet. Okay, so what uh, what problem does using raw strings uh, solve? Okay. Well, the problem that we're trying to solve is uh, uh, this. If we look down through the slides for uh, Severance Chapter 11, we'll see in a typical uh, use of a regular expression pattern, okay, uh, we don't have any slashes at all, okay? For instance, uh, here we just have uh, the regular uh, characters f r o m and colon that are representing themselves and the only meta character that we have is the circumflex that says uh, i want to match from the beginning of a line okay so uh no real problem there all right now let's go down to uh Let's go down to uh, here. And here, uh, we're using the backslash S as a, as a way to express in the pattern that I want to match uh, any non-white space uh, character. And there's a whole bunch of these. There's uh, uh, the backsplash, uh, sorry, the backslash S the backslash D, there, there's a whole bunch of them, okay? And um, it, it's really uh, this um, way of expressing ourselves that leads to a problem and an opportunity to use raw strings, okay? All right, so that's where we could have used them uh, in the chapter. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to create a, a program uh, here. And let's see if we want a new uh, Python file. Okay. And let's call it, uh, uh, let's call it demonstrate need for raw string. Reg, regex, regular expression, uh, dot pi. Just call it that. Okay. And I'm going to be copying in some, uh, some content from my already baked version of this. So here are my uh, comments for the top. Okay. So let's make it a little bigger. There we go. So there's the name of the file, show why raw strings are preferred for Python regular expressions. All right. Uh, if we want to use regular expressions, we need to import the RE package. So we're going to want to uh, import RE. All right. That makes sense. And uh, let's uh, create a proper uh, program with a main function. Let's just put pass in there for now. And let's uh, skip a couple lines, have an invocation to main. Uh, all right, so that's the skeleton of a typical uh, program. OK, so let's uh, do let's do a basic search, OK? I'm going to copy this one in from my already baked version. And I'm going to use, well, 
redo that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to bring in the following uh, code. So I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use uh, the search uh, function, right? And uh, I'm going to say that the pattern I'm looking for is just a regular pattern, no backslashes in it at all. That's that's the first case that we just saw from the slides. And so I just want to match to the end of the string. So I've got a dollar sign at the end of the pattern. And I provided a string that ends with end of string. So, and that's at the end. So that should uh, match. So uh, the search uh, should return uh, true, in which case I should print uh, found a match instead of not found. Uh, no match found. Okay, so I'm expecting found the match. Let's do that. And here we go down the bottom, found the match. Okay, well that works just fine. That's what we were expecting. All right, so uh, now, so if we are using a pattern, that doesn't have any backslashes in it, we could get away without having to deal with the raw string issue forever, okay? Regular Python strings work great for patterns that don't have a backslash in them, okay? What happens if you add a backslash? Well, let's bring over some code, okay? And add it to our demonstration program here and our code is going to uh, it's going to search for a pattern that uh, requires one of the backslash expressions that's part of um, the regular expression pattern language Okay, and this is the backslash lowercase a d, which uh, means one digit. And so the pattern that we're looking for is three digits, a dash, three digits, a dash, four digits. A typical way that people would express a phone number these days, uh, uh, including an area code, which is uh, the current uh, style. So we're trying to match that to a string that includes something that qualifies. So when I, I run this, the second uh, 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 piece of code that runs should also find a match. So let's uh, see if that works as well. Yeah, okay. Found match, found match. There they are. Okay, good. But look what we have with our code here if you if you really look at our code you'll see there's a squiggly gray underline underneath that regular expression uh pattern string and if we hover over it it says uh it has an in, an invalid escape sequence backslash d and it says that it's a violation of the PEP8 style guidelines. Okay, so here's what we've done. What we've done is we've taken the same approach that um, Severance has in chapter 11. We said, well, we're not going to worry about the backslashes. Uh, we're just going to provide a single backslash, okay? And um, we're going to let uh, the interpreter figure out that this is a regular expression uh, pattern, and we want the backslash. Uh, we want the backslash to not be uh, trying to escape uh, um, some kind of a character in the string itself, but uh, to be the backslash as we use it in the regular expression. And what they're telling us here is. That kind of practice is uh, not consistent with the PEP8 style guidelines. It's not a good coding uh, practice. Oh, it's not. Well, how could we solve that? Well, one way to solve it is to uh, just 
um, come up with an expression that um, uh, keeps in mind, let me copy it in here, it keeps, uh, it, it, it pays attention to the fact that uh, in a proper Python 3 string, which is a Unicode capable string, uh, the backsplash, uh, the backslash, if I say backsplash one more time, I'm going to have to re-record this and we're both going to be disappointed. The backslash uh, is an escape a character for Python strings as well, and it's a way that we introduce special characters into the string. So that's the way that we get uh, a new line character, that's the way we get a tab, uh, that's the way we get a, a, a whole lot of things. So. Uh, if in fact we're we're coding the string the right way, if we want a literal backslash, we have to type in two. We have to escape the backslash. So we need to, instead of just one backslash before the lowercase d, we need two. Okay. Well, that doesn't look very appealing. Okay, but let's see. Uh, you can see there's no squiggly line over this like there is over the one up here. So uh, we had, we've solved the problem that we're violating the PEP8 style guidelines. And let's see if it's going to work. Okay, this is the third one. So this should find a match as well. Let's go down and look. And it worked uh, fine. So it, uh, it works. It's uh, consistent with the style guidelines, but most people think that this is clunky, okay? That uh, it's hard to read. And they don't like the fact that uh, now when you uh, conform with uh, the typical rules for forming Python strings, if you conform to the rules of that and you don't have a violation of the PEP8 style guidelines, then the way you express a regular expression like this in uh, Python is not the same as the way you express it uh, in all the other products that use regular expressions. So that looks uh, kind of disappointing. Okay, so to the rescue, there's an approach called raw strings. So let's take a look at what that looks like, okay? So raw strings, um, we're going to put it right in here. So what do raw strings look like? Well, here, let's get a couple of blank lines in here so that we're doing things the right way. Uh, just right before the string, you have a lowercase r. So that's modifying the string, and it is uh, saying, this may look like a plain old Python string, uh, but it's not, okay? And what's different about it, well, it's a raw string, and what's different about a raw string, in raw strings, the normal capability to, uh, to express uh, characters to include uh, characters that don't occur on our, our keyboard using a backslash has been disabled. Okay, so uh, within the string, all that we can do is we can type uh, the characters that are on our uh, keyboard. Okay, so all that kind of stuff that we could do with the backslashes and strings to get additional special characters, uh, that's been turned off, okay? As a result, we only have to put a single backslash in front of the D to say uh, digit three, digit three, digit four. This is the same way we would express it in some other product or language that use regular expressions. And it's really considered the best practice, okay? All right, so let's see how that works. How does that work? So we run that, that found a match as well. So we get the results that we're looking for, 
uh, plus uh, we get to express the the pattern in a more reasonable way and the only thing that we need to do is to include before the pattern string a lowercase r which makes it a raw string now this is recommended um, in um, the documentation uh, for a while. Certainly it was uh, recommended for Python 3.6 as the best uh, practice in the documentation for Python 3.7. It says the same thing, that this is a way to get around all the problems with the backslashes in regular expressions. Use Python raw strings. Well, we can see that we want to use them here for uh, regular expressions that include backslashes. What about plain old regular expressions that don't include a backslash? Can we use them for that as well? And the answer is going to turn out to be yes, we can. Well, let's try that again. There it is. Okay. So here's... Um, that wasn't what we were looking for. I'm sorry. Uh, um, huh. Oh, I, I see what I did here. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Here's the code I wanted. So let me copy this and let me paste it over here. And here it is. So, uh, Here's a typical thing where we're trying to match the end of the string. Okay, and so we want to match, we've got the dollar sign at the end, and we wanted uh, we want to have end of string, and we're trying to match it in a string that ends with end of string, and we're expecting to find a, a, a match. There are no backslashes in the pattern. So do we really have to include the R? No, we don't really. But uh, quite a few people have uh, begun to always code the, uh, the uh, pattern string for regular expression as a raw string. They just uh, consider, even if you don't have a backslash in your, in your pattern now, you might be adding one, and there is no reason to not uh, do that. That's the, uh, the idea. So, run that again, okay, and they all match, okay? So, uh, here's the idea that I'd like to uh, propose. It's that, you know, we can always use a raw string. We can always have the lowercase r in front of the string that shows the pattern for the regular expression. We can do that all the time, okay? Now, I tell you what, what that brought to mind for me. I said, is that really true? Um, isn't there some time in which we might, we might want to use the backslash uh, in a normal string as a way to express uh, something uh, in a regular expression? So we do, you know, do we really want to go to all raw strings? Okay, or do we only want to go to raw strings when we have a backslash in in the pattern that's part of the regular expression language? And the answer is the former. We want to go to raw strings all the time. So now I'm going to do a little demonstration where I'm going to show you that it's possible to um, it's possible for us to uh, use regular expressions to find all of the characters that we would normally put into a Python string with the backslashes. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at that. So um, I've got, let me copy over another demonstration program that I want to show you. Okay, and I'll open it up. It's called 
printing Python 3 strings. Okay, and here it is. Okay, so I, I asked myself, I said, self, um, what are the things that we print as uh, text in Python? Some of which uh, are we typically express with uh, the backslash escape uh, sequences. Well, one of the things we print is regular text. Okay, so uh, it's like this: A B C D E F G. Okay. Um, all right. Now. If in fact we're enclosing our text, uh, so let's let's do that. Let's just take let's comment out the code that we haven't uh, uh, discussed uh, yet. Okay, so let's uh, come down here. Let's run this, uh, and you can see regular text. Okay, well that's fine. We weren't using any backspot. Uh, backslashes at all. Okay, so let's uh, look at the next thing. Well, another tricky thing that we want to do is uh, we want a real apostrophe to appear in the word, okay? Some people enclose their character strings with apostrophes. Some people enclose them with uh, double quotes. What if you want to get uh, an apostrophe into the string? Well, there are two ways to do it, okay? The first way is just to put the double quotes on the outside, and then you can use the apostrophe inside just to represent itself. Where the other thing is you can still use the apostrophes on the outside, but now you do have to, uh, you do have to resort to uh, the backsplash, uh, backslash apostrophe in order to uh, to properly uh, have an embedded apostrophe. So these are the two approaches to embedded apostrophes. And let's give those a run. Okay. And you can see... Uh, they both work. I got the apostrophe into "Don't worry, be happy," uh, both ways. So those, uh, so that's our first use of the backslash. Okay. Uh, what if we were trying to do the same thing with the double quotes? Okay. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that out of a, um, a comment. Let's uncomment this so it's not looking bad. Okay. All right. So if, in fact, what we want to have uh, embedded is a double quote, well, that's not a problem if we're putting our strings into apostrophes. We just put the double quotes as many as we would like on the inside. Uh, but if we're uh, a programmer who uses uh, the double quotes to enclose the, the strings and we want to embed uh, one or more uh, double quotes inside here's the second time we have to resort to the backslash backslash okay so let's see how that works let's just give that a run okay and we'll see down here uh i uh I came up with the sentence, we're looking for closure, kind of air quotes around uh, closure on this terrible issue. So I was able to get that to work, both using the backslash and not. Okay, so sometimes in Python, we want to, we want to be able to end a line and we want to be able to control that. And uh, typically in Python, we do that with a new line uh, character. Uh, and so how do we do that? Well, we do that in three different ways that we could do that. And let me show you those. Okay, now the first thing that we could do is uh, we could just do a print and then implicitly at the end of the print, uh, we get a new line. That's how it typically works with a uh, print. If you want to explicitly 
uh, get a new line uh, character in Python 3. Uh, then you have a named uh, parameter, uh, a keyword uh, parameter, end, and then you give it the string backslash n. That's the way to express a new line character, which uh, doesn't appear on your keyboard explicitly. Um, that's how you explicitly ask for the new line. And there are, in, in Unix-based operating sy systems, which include uh, Mac OS and Linux, uh, it, typically we end a line with just a new line, okay? In the Windows operating system, um, the convention is to use a carriage return and a, a line feed. So that's actually two characters to end each of the text uh, lines. And you can actually force that um, out of a Python by saying that we want to return and a new line. So we use end equal backslash r backslash n. Okay. Um, it doesn't help us a whole lot in Python because for the most part, we're only looking for the end that's at, at the end. Okay. But I just wanted to show you let me undo that. I just wanted to show you that that's a way that you could express it. So let's look at those. Let's give those a run. Okay, make them a little bigger. And uh, now we've got one line that we implicitly ended, another line that we explicitly ended, and a line that we explicitly ended with a carriage return and a line feed, although we can't see the endings because um, they're not uh, printable. Okay. All right. Well, another thing that people use the backslashes for are tabs. Okay, so let's see how tabbing works. All right. So we'll bring those back. So uh, the tab key that's on the keyboard, when we're working in this uh, pie charm, which we do in my class, uh, it, we, we have set the tab key to enter spaces, okay? So these are tabs that are entered from the keyboard. Uh, so we've got first, hit the tab key, second, hit the tab key, third, hit the tab key. And what it's doing is it's actually uh, putting spaces into the string itself to simulate uh, tabbing, okay? That's, a, that's the feature of the PyCharm text editor with the way we have it uh, configured. But what if we wanted to get proper tabs? Well, of course, the way we would do it is uh, we would use the backslash as an escape and then the letter T. So here in the second line, we've got first, and then we've got the escape tab, second escape tab, third the escape tab, and then fourth. Okay, so are those gonna look the same? No, they're gonna look similar, um, but it's way really the second one that has the proper tabs. So let's take a look at those. And if you look at these, you're going to see first, second, third, fourth. That's kind of like tabs. The, the amount of spaces we got between first and second was not the same as we got later. But here, when we use the proper tabs, it, it seems uh, pretty consistent all the way uh, across. So we got uh, proper tabs there. Okay. Now we've only got a couple more things that we typically use the backslash for um, in our uh, in the strings that we use inside of a Python three uh, program. One is, what if we want to print the backslash itself in a, a Python three string? How do we do that? Well, as you already know we do it with a double backslash, okay? So we just, we have the uh, uh, the first one t to get into escape uh, mode, and then we have the second one that says uh, we want a backslash. 
So let's give that a print. Okay. And that works just fine. There's the backslash. Okay. Now what other kind of thing would we typically want to use a backslash for in our Python 3 Unicode strings? And the only other typical use case that I get involved with is, is to pick a character that isn't on the keyboard. Uh, sometimes this is something like the copyright symbol, but um, uh, one symbol that is not on the keyboard is this uh, uh, a Chinese uh, uh, a character called Fu, which uh, apparently means uh, fortune or good luck. And of course, uh, if we have an American English uh, keyboard, we don't have a Fu on our keyboard. Um, if we had a Chinese keyboard, I don't know the answer to that, but people in my class are going to tell me this week, which would be fun, um, whether they have a foo on their keyboard. Because I'm, I'm really, uh, I have a lot to learn about uh, non-American English uh, uh, keyboards. So let's, uh, and so how do we express that? Well, backslash lowercase u, and then a hexadecimal uh, number that I got out of a, well, I got this one off of Google, but I, I went to a site that had uh, the the encoding for the character Foo, and um, it said it, it was a 798F in hexadecimal. So if we run that, uh, we're going to get, let's, uh, Let's do that. Let's come down here. Okay. And so uh, a Unicode symbol not on the keyboard, and we see the symbol right here is the character foo, meaning fortune or good luck. So those are the things we might need a slash for in the string. And so the question that I had is, uh, if I decide to use raw strings in which I can't use, I've essentially turned off the, the escaping in Python strings, am I still able, in my regular expression, am I able to look for all of those things? And the answer is yes, I can. Okay, and I wrote a program uh, to demonstrate that, okay? Now we'll take a look at that in a minute, but uh, one of the things that I did is I wanted to take all the strings that I printed in this uh, demo program, and I wanted to put them into a text file. And what I did the first time is I, I just uh, copied them all, and I pasted them into a new editor panel, okay? And it turns out that the only thing that I couldn't really get like that was uh, the the one line I was trying to end with a carriage return and a line feed. I couldn't do that. So what I did is is I created another program that's a copy of this, and uh, I'm going to copy it over. Let's just put it over here, and uh, let's paste it. Okay. And this one's called uh, uh, Printing Python 3 Strings to File. Okay, so how's that different? Well, let's close this for a second. Uh, it's different in that we, uh, we uh, created a file. Okay, so we, uh, we're opening a file called String Output Include including crlf.txt. And then in all the prints that we have, we have added the uh, the keyword uh, parameter uh, file equals in the name of the file, which in this case, the uh, variable that holds the res reference to the file is called out file. Uh, so we uh, open the output file, we do all the prints, and then we close uh, the output file. 
So if we run this uh, here, if we run this, we're going to see uh, uh, that we opened it, we did all the writing, and then we closed it. Oh, okay. Well, then that file ought to be in our working uh, directory here. And in fact, here it is. String output including CRLF. Okay. Now, the problem is that uh, the text, if I open this up on the text editor that's in PyCharm, uh, it's just going to throw away the carriage return. Okay. So, what can I open this with? Well, it turns out that I can open it with, um, let me first get to that uh, directory. I can open it with um, TextMate, which is my favorite little uh, Mac OS text editor. And here it is. All right. And so let's make this text a little bigger. Okay, and what I did is, is I picked a theme that shows the unprintable uh, characters. So it shows spaces as a dot. It shows uh, the new line as this, uh, uh, oh, kind of angle bracket. Oh, okay, it's a, so these all end with a uh, new line. And then the one that we tried to add with a carriage return and a, a new line, you can say we did actually uh, we did actually uh, create one with a carriage return and a new line. Other than that, all these other ones just have a uh, new line. So, so what I want to do is I want to uh, create a program that processes these and says, can I find all these things? Uh, if I do it with regular expressions that use raw strings? And the answer is I can. Okay. All right. So let's see that work. Okay. So uh, I have a, another program that I'm going to bring over from my already baked one. And this one is called raw string regular expression demo and um i kind of want to show this code for a couple of reasons one is we're using regular expressions in a slightly different way okay uh regular expressions um are under the covers uh regular expressions are an object okay and uh, how are they uh, created? Well, there's uh, a command in uh, the regular expression uh, package, uh, compile, and you pass it a string, and it compiles it into a pattern object. Um, and, and then you're able to reuse that pattern object over and over again, uh, okay? now. It turns out that uh, people used to compile these things, and they and they used to use the pattern object to do the search or the match, or the find all, um, because they thought that that was a way to uh, to not have to recompile the regular expression every time through. Now it, it turns out that the regular expression uh, package in Python. Uh, keeps the compiled versions of these uh, uh, patterns in uh, a safe uh, place in a queue of some kind. And so when you when you just uh, do a search or a find all or a uh, match without having pre-compiled the pattern, it goes and see if it's already compiled that pattern. And if it does, it uses that pattern object. And so for the most part, um, most people don't, who, unless they're trying to get just a little bit more uh, performance out of their code, uh, they don't explicitly use the compiled uh, patterns. Uh, they let Python take care of that uh, kind of under the covers. Okay. But 
what I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, I wanted to create a function, okay, that I could pass a file and a pattern. Okay, the file that I want to pass is the one that we just uh, saw. This uh, string output including crlf.txt. And let's let's open that with the editor here. It'll get rid of the line feed, but you see this is the this is the one I want to process. Okay. So I want to process that and I, I want to uh, uh, process it with a a function. So what happens is you come into the function, so you've got the file, okay, you've got the file name, and you've got the pattern object, and then you say, okay, I want to print that I'm searching this file name using this uh, pattern, okay, and then I open the input file, and I, I set the line count to 1 and the match count to 1, and then I read all the lines in the input file for a four line in in file. Okay, so I, I bump up the line count, I increment the line count, and uh, I can say if this pattern search, so the way you do a uh, search, if you have the pattern, you're keeping the pattern, is you have a pattern object and it has a search method and then you pass it the string that you're trying to match so if it matches uh, increase the match count by one and uh, print the line okay uh, so we're going to do that for all the lines okay and then we're going to print uh, how many matches lines were matched using this uh, pattern uh, and then uh, we close the file Oh, okay. So we know the file that we're going through. We know that what we're going to do is, uh, if in fact we get a match on one of the lines, we're going to uh, we're going to show that line and we're going to count it as the match. Okay. So let's look at what we have here. Well, I've got all the patterns um, that we had uh, before. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to search for them. So let's, let's do our uh, classic, put the ones we don't want to see yet into a comment. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to search for plain old text, which of course in that file is just that A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And again, we can use the raw string and we can just match a b c d e f g this is the easiest uh, case this is a case where we definitely did not have to have a uh we did not have to have a we didn't have to use the the backslash okay and let's uh, give it a run okay what does that say so uh it finds the first line and it says one lines were matched. Okay, that's what I expected. All right, so let's see. What about if we're looking for the embedded apostrophe? Can we find that okay using a raw string? Okay, so how would we do that? Well, uh, uh, we would do it uh, like this. Okay, so we would use... Uh, the quote marks on uh, the outside and the apostrophe on the inside. That's how we would, uh, we would uh, uh, create that pattern. Okay. And let's go give that a run. And did that work? Yeah, we got both of the lines that said, don't worry, be happy. Okay. So that's fine. We can find an embedded apostrophe with a raw string expressed uh, pattern. Uh, what's the next one? Well, can we find an embedded uh, um, quote mark? And we can. We just put the apostrophes on the outside of the string, the quote mark inside. Okay. And again, we've got the raw string. 
and let's uh, look at that and give that a run. And you'll see, gone the wrong way there, you'll see here that we found the two lines where we said we're looking for closure, in air quotes, okay? So yeah, we were able to make that work. Okay, now what about the new line? Okay, now we try to do the new line a couple different ways. We did it the implicit way, we did it the explicit way, we did it with a, a carriage return and a new line. So let's see what we can find here. So uh, again, now this is the first time that we have to use the uh, backslash. So how do you how do you form a regular expression? using the regular expression language uh, with a raw string where you're looking for a new line and it's just backslash n, okay? The regular expression language has a lot of these escaped uh, sequences uh, and it turns out it uses the same one that Python does, backslash n, okay? So let's give that a run. Okay, so let's look at that. And we can see that, of course, it matches every line because every line ends in a new line, including uh, all the line ending ones. So we matched uh, the one we, we matched all the lines we printed, okay, and uh, in particular, the one that had the implicit line ending with the new line, the one that had the explicit one, and the one that had a character return and a line feed, uh, of course, it has a line feed on the end, and that works fine. Okay, now here's the only one I wasn't able to get to work the right way, and I think it's as much a operating system or a Python problem, but the one that I can't get to work to my satisfaction yet okay, perhaps you'll be able to do it and you'll show me how to make it work, is uh, I'm trying to match the sequence of uh, a carriage return and a line feed. And we know I've got one record uh, that matches that. Uh, and yet when I, <laughs> when I run that, uh, I don't find anything. So if you look down at the bottom, uh, I don't find a line to match, and I know that there is one. So, I uh, haven't solved that one yet. I'll leave that for you to solve and uh, 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 to uh, tell me about the solution. Okay, what about tabs? Okay, so um, let's look. We had two kinds of tabs. We had one where you used the tab key, and we saw that... Uh, that that in in a pie charm that's just a way to enter spaces okay um having to do with where you are within the uh the line okay uh and then if we use the backslash t we got a proper tab uh character in the line so what i'm expecting is we're going to find uh, uh the line that has the proper tabs in it and not the one that had has the phony tabbing uh, in it. And what's the expression that you look for uh, here? Oh, by the way, uh, uh, up here when we look for the new line, I, I, I said in regular expressions, when you want the new line, it's backslash lowercase n. Uh, down here, when you want to look for a carriage return, it's uh, backslash lowercase r. Uh, when you're looking for a tab, well, it's the same way that we say tab in uh, Python strings, except that uh, if we put the r in front of it, then we've turned off all that Python string escaping. But it turns out it uses the same expression in regular expression pattern uh, language. So the way you find a tab is with a backslash lowercase uh, t. All right, good, let's give that a run. 
And what did we find? There's the one with the proper tabs. Okay, so we found one Y. Okay, now, uh, what about if we're looking for a backslash? Can we do that? And yeah, we can. All right, so what does that look like? Okay, so it turns out that uh, the way that you you say I want to match a back a backslash in the regular expression pattern language is that you code it as two backslashes. So we're going to expect to match one line. Let's see what we got. Yep. One line. It's the one with the backslash. Okay. Now, what if we're trying to find some character that's not on the keyboard that we want to use that Unicode encoding to uh, say this is the character that we're looking for? Well, you know what? It turns out that the same syntax that we used uh, in order to form the Python string when we wrote it, it turns out that the notation is the exact same inside the regular expression, expression uh, pattern language. So again, we've got the raw string, and again, we've got the backslash lowercase u, and then the hexadecimal 798f, and that should find the line with the foo. So let's go run that. And did we find the line with the foo? And there's our foo right there. We found it. So what have we proved? Well, we proved two things. One is that uh, I still don't have full mastery of this uh, how to find a carriage uh, return on my uh, Mac using uh, the carriage return and the line feed. And I it, it doesn't seem to work on my Windows version either. So uh, again, uh, to be improved. But the other thing that we prove is what we set out to prove is that you can use raw strings for anything you're looking for with the pattern uh, language. Even the things that we had to use a backslash for when we printed using Python 3 strings with uh, the backslash escaping turned on. Uh, even all those things that we needed the backslash for on the print side, uh, we can catch with a raw string regular expression um, on the searching uh, side. So it's... Uh, what I'm going to recommend is whenever you have a regular expression that you use a raw string, like I, I did here, even for plain old text, okay? Now, do you have to do it for plain old text? Uh, no. You really only have to do it for things that it would include a slash. I mean, I'm sorry, a backslash, okay? But uh, I think... Uh, there's a lot of things where we tell people um, it's a better practice to just uh, use it all the time, okay? And uh, here, for instance, if we have an expression like this and we're saying, um, okay, we want to we want to include a new line at the end. Sorry, not a capital N, but just a plain old N. Well, we could do that. All right. Uh, and we could do that because it, it's already a raw string. All right. So I'm saying use the raw string all the time. You can find anything you want. Okay. We've been able to demonstrate that anything that we needed the backslash for when printing the strings out, we don't need them for uh, when we're using, when we are searching for those kinds of characters. Uh, using the regular expression uh, pattern. The pattern language itself is expressive enough all by itself that we'll be able to find everything. Now, uh, I just want to show you one more thing and I'm, I'm going to let you go. And that is, uh, what really happens when we use a raw string? 
Well, let's look at the output that we have from our uh, our uh, testing. Oh, okay. Um, um, it is uh, saying in each of these, we print out the text version of that compiled regular expression object, okay? And so when it shows the, um, when it shows the pattern, it shows, it, it, what it did is it took each of our backslashes and it turned it into two. Well, that, that was the first thing that we thought of, but we didn't like the look of it. Okay, it didn't look like regular expressions were going to look in all the other products. But how does it solve it? Well, if we send it a raw string uh, with with a, a backslash n, it eventually turns it into a pain uh, a plain old Python string with a double backslash uh, double backslash n, except that our code doesn't have that in it. So if you go down to if you, if you get out our code, our code reads very nicely. Uh, what is actually in the internal object? Well, a plain old string with with uh, double backslashes. So if you look at this, uh, we were looking for the return and the line feed. We've got double backslashes. We're looking for the tab. We've got double backslashes. When we're looking for the slash, we've got four backslashes. Um, and it's pretty easy to see that if you don't go to raw strings and you do explicitly code in all the backslashes to, um, you know, to, to, to please um, the, uh, the PEP8 style checker, that you wind up with some pretty unwieldy looking uh pattern expressions that you really wouldn't want to have so this approach that we have here um in this uh final uh demonstration uh this is what we consider to be your best practice okay always use uh the r uh before the string that uh gives the pattern for the regular expression and it doesn't mean they are it doesn't mean there's a regular expression coming it means there's a, a raw string uh, coming and what's a raw string it's a plain old python string with the backslash escaping having been turned off and as we've been able to see that works just fine for any use case we're able to think of so um uh, that's a lot of detail just to tell you to to put the lowercase r in front of your pattern. Um, but this is an exercise I did for myself uh, to prove that uh, I wasn't going to need those uh, backslashes in my strings. And I, I think I pretty well proved it. And hopefully that gives you the confidence to use raw strings in in every pattern, every time you're using regular expressions. Well, that's it. I'm going to say bye for now. Bye-bye.